Hi, I'm Michael Pizer, and this is Trailers from Hell. We're going to take a look at trailer from Seven Days in May, which is a fabulous movie, and a fabulous trailer, and a really important film. It was a film directed by John Frankenheimer that starred Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster, and is about the... Uh, purported attempt of a general to bring down the president of the United States in a coup. So actually, uh, even though it was made in 1963 and released in 1964, it is hugely topical since uh, we're dealing with just the same kind of uh, uh, strife and uh, contention between the military and the executive office today. Seven Days in May was a important novel in the early 60s, written by Fletcher Nebel and Charles Bailey. And during the Kennedy administration, it was a popular thriller, uh, and because it captured the notion that Kennedy was pushing the country and maybe the military, which represented the sort of forces that came out of the World War II, were not ready to go there and maybe there would be a coup. The script was written by Rod Serling of Twilight Zone fame, and it is a really great script, directed by John Frankenheimer with his usual taut pacing and suspense. What really makes the movie work is the antagonists. The general is played by Burt Lancaster, and his uh, underling who becomes the person who has to turn him in is Kirk Douglas. And Kirk Douglas is fabulous and gets to, they stare each other down in an incredible fashion. There's also this very cool element of uh, use of documentary footage interspersed with it, and it led to this sort of resistance movements that were starting then in the early 60s and built it up so you really got a sense of protest against the government, which hadn't happened before, and it was personified in this movie. It was a very popular movie. It preceded some of the other films, Fail Safe, that came out thereafter, and uh, Dr. Strangelove. And so it was an um, important film. There's also interesting world of Washington, where there's a woman who both has had an affair with the Douglas character and with a senator, and so she's sort of powerful and uh, manipulative. And it turns into you really don't know whether he's going down or not. There's a great line, there's a, uh, a plot against you to bring you down, and it's going to happen this Sunday. That was the sort of catch line of the, of the movie. It was coming out of the Cold War, but it what it created was a sense of indignation towards... Uh, due process, government, uh, leadership. Well, I built them, I've misled them, I've stripped them naked and made them defenseless. You accuse me of having lost their faith, deliberately and criminally shut my ears to the national voice. I do. Well, where the hell have you heard that voice, General? In freight elevators, in dark alleys, in secret places in the dead of night? How did that voice seep into a locked room full of conspirators? That's not where you hear the voice of the people, General, not in this republic. The issue here was the president was pushing for nuclear uh, peace with Russia. And that was certainly a contentious issue then. It is now, but we don't talk about it because we have other issues. Stellar cast, David Gardner, Frick Marsh, Edmund O'Brien is the senator, Mark Balsam. You see, they even let you shoot in front of the White House then. It probably was uh, Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster getting a favor. Uh, this movie was shot before the Kennedy assassination and released thereafter. So the sense of paranoia was palpable and real in the country when it came out, and uh, it was pretty successful. <laughs>